Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tanks Invest. We're talking about investing, finance, and professional bond. That's the recording time of 7:38 a.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum Coin trade three thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars, down about five point six three percent so far. As you can see clearly on a pre-market perspective, we're bright red all over again, with respect to multiple macro catalysts that's driving this sell-off. From yesterday, around 2:30 p.m. on the Eastern Time, as the minutes from the December, you know, Fed's meeting came out, right? And based on the verbiage in the minutes, obviously, as you can see in the translation into the market sentiments, it seems like on a high-level perspective that the officials from the Feds are ready to aggressively dial back on the policy help, right? The quantitative tapering, right? Um, and with respect to that, it will subsequently cut off the stimulus checks that the Americans' residents are going to be getting. Obviously, with that tapering, it will subsequently increase the, the interest rate, right? The bond yields, um, you know, for respective corporate um, companies, which translates into uh, that they have to be paying a higher um, interest payment going forward for the debt instruments that they incur in their balance sheets, right? For the Operations for the day-to-day -day expense that will cut into their profitability, you know. And in addition to that, another affectation that we also have to understand, besides the Fed minutes, which was obviously a negative one, right? It was not just uh, driving the crypto market to go down, but also on the equity market, right? Uh, would be with respect to the internet shutdown, um, in Kazakhstan. Um, following the protests against energy prices rises. Um, and this is um, not a direct correlation um, onto crypto sell-off, but if you look, think about it, uh, Kazakhstan is the second largest country for Bitcoin mining, with about 18% of Bitcoin hash rates, or basically the computing power. So the internet shutdown causes the 12% drop in Bitcoin's harsh rate, um, you know, it's not a direct correlation to the price of Bitcoin, obviously, because it's just the mining, but um, it gives the indications of the network security, right? So with respect to, um, you know, I guess this gap um, on a technological front, it can spook investors in a short-term affectation, right? So these two catalysts, right? So the Feds, obviously, is the first one, right? Obviously, that was... Um, Big no no for the entire market. Kazakhstan, which is more again, right, not a direct correlation because mining doesn't really have anything direct to specifically just the overall crypto market and the equity market, but obviously will have some adjacent negative affectation onto directly Bitcoin because of the Bitcoin mining, um, you know, ecosystem in Kazakhstan. Um, but Bitcoin also has that mother lord. Uh, drag effects across to the entire crypto market, right? So in addition to that, uh, also the Omicron news, um, as you can see from just on domestic front, it seems like there is uh, a mandate uh, for children um, that are aged from 12 to 18 years old. Uh, there's a mandatory vaccinations um, for, uh, for students in the U.S., um, because of the cases, you know, in you know, are surging, uh, not just domestically in the U.S. but across the world. Um, so, seems like there are more news that are scaring investors away as well. Um, because um, you know, the cases are quite dramatic. Like in New York, this is, which is where I'm from, I think yesterday there was about seventy-seven thousand cases that was identified, and then in New Jersey it was like fifty-six thousand. So that's a six digits of um, residents that has been identified to have uh, the Omicron, right, or a Delta variant, um, and that's a sizable amount, right? Um, so it's definitely driving some, uh, you know, more uncertainty, more worries. Um, Another thing that we also see is, you know, there's been some um, rotation into more of the dividend uh, ETF stocks uh, recently because of the fact that investors, you know, when there's high uncertainty, they tend to flee into more of the safe haven type of stocks. Um, 
and uh, ETFs, you know, or dividend stocks typically will provide you a monthly or a quarterly uh, payment via obviously a dividend, right? Um, and these stocks are typically more stable, uh, which obviously demands and allows them to provide dividends to their investors. Um, so it's more of a, you know, fear mongering, fleeing to the safe haven type of affectation among investors. Okay, so that's the macro affectation after stitching all the news collectively together. So the big question mark is like, what's going on now? Like, what's the momentum going forward? So let's dive straight into the technicals and not waste any more time. So respect to recording time of 7.44 a.m. on the Eastern time, Ethereum country $3,333, down about 5.74%. So quadruple number is actually a lucky number. So somehow... Uh, I'm not a superstitious pester in person, but uh, seeing numbers like this oftentimes uh, conveys a good luck uh, if you talk about superstitions, if you may. And I'm also wearing a green hat. I guess maybe yesterday I was wearing a red sweater. Some people was pointing it out. That's what we we're selling off. So today I'm wearing the complete opposite. I'm wearing a green shirt and a green hat. Obviously, it doesn't do anything because it's just superstitions, right? But anyways, let's just dive right into the technicals. So right now you can see clearly uh, we are bouncing exactly at the resistance level that we've identified. You can see clearly, and I'm not making this up, right? You can see we bounce, we sell down from the hovering level of the 3,640, and then we went down straight down to the 3,472, which we hover for like hours around. But as the international side of the house start to pick up, you can see that clearly. Because of the negative global affectation, we sell down to the next resistance level. So if you look at the technical, you can see that clearly we are currently at the 31.21 out of 70 at the moment. And compare that historically, um, this is probably um, the lowest that we have been historically. If you look back, I'm like going way back, way back, way back right now, right? And I would say right now is definitely, definitely oversold on the entire level, right? So a lot of people actually sold on a loss based on what I'm seeing right now, right? And obviously, um, every single time, if you look at historical levels, we have pretty much bounced off at the same comparable resistance level on the RSI scale perspective. So taking the logical risk is not a terrible idea. Right, obviously, do we see 3,150? That will be the next level of resistance that we'll go down to. But I think because of the fact that we are on the Earth cross right now, if we go further down, that will be drilling oil, which wouldn't make quite much sense, wouldn't it? Right. So I think right now, um, taking the logical move, right, and I wouldn't suggest like selling on a loss because we're down, you know, at five percent right now. But remember this fact, right? Um, as the as the price goes down, the risk also simultaneously go down together. So the risk level is a lot more tolerable in comparisons to when we were at the four thousand eight hundred seventy one. And and right now, when everybody is saying that panic, 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 um, fear is all time high. The ones that think logically would be dollar cost averaging at the moment. So I'm actually planning on dollar cost averaging. Uh, so I'm looking into my cash reserve, which I have 30% of my cash reserve on the side right now. Um, and it is within the um, dollar cost average identification level that I've shared with you guys, right? If, you know, for my Patreon members, like that's the levels that we keep reminding ourselves on, right? For the 35 respective crypto and the, I think 32 uh, equity now that i'm still updating on a daily basis so respect to bitcoin we are um we broke below the current level at the forty four thousand, right but despite that right we are at the 31 out of 70. Now let's see how much like we have oversold in the past this is pretty much bottom right now based on what i'm seeing in front of me um I mean, we have gone down a little bit further in the past, like to even at one point, and this is like way long ago, like last year in May, we got to like the 25 out of 70, 27 out of 70. So I think we are near bottom already. Uh, we are basically $2,000 away from the 40,000 mark. 
um, I think we're pretty much almost there. Uh, I don't really see us like going further down. I think the worst is probably like 42 or 41, 500 flat. Um, I think 40 mark is going to be a real sh stretch, especially in the near term. Uh, unless Jerome Powell says something other crazy or Joe Biden say some other crazy stuff, you know, but um, We have already seen a overreaction in the market uh, Obviously with multiple factors like I just mentioned right the feds the Kazakhstan the Omicron uh, So I think yesterday or the current level we are overreacting um, So I think when you, people overreacting they Doing that, they're doing that with emotions, not logics. So I think it's logical if you are thinking clearly and looking at the chart and it makes sense to incur risk. Respect to Dogecoin, um, we are at the oversold level. So anywhere from, again, right, 16 to below. So we are within the strike zone right now. Cardano is now about 1.8%. Uh, we are at the 120. So great, we are at 38 out of 70. I don't really see us going to 102. That's a stretch because of the resistance level that we've had so far. So not terrible, I would say. Solana is now about 12%. Again, right, we set that 155 to 133 to 113. So the technical is doing it for us. Uh, so the next level that we're going to lead down to would be somewhere around like the 133, you know, 135 uh, to 113 from here. We are relatively depl depleted, right? It's 32 out of 70. So it's below 155. So not terrible again, right? XRP is at 75 right now. Um, you can see that clearly we bounce off of 69 because of the overreaction. And altcoins are a little bit more volatile compared to the stable coins or the key coins, if you may, right? With the 34 out of 70. So bright red and oversold dramatically. So not terrible, again, to incur risk. I think it's in, within the strike zone. Uh, Polkadot is down about 13% right now. Um, anywhere from the... I would say current level all the way down to the 2330 is still good. But right now, uh, Polkadot still have some room to fall because we have like the search we have recently. This is clearly a head and shoulder. We could see clearly. We still have some room to fall down to. So I would start incurring somewhere around like the 2450 to below. Algorand is about 11% right now. Uh, I, was, I wouldn't really still touch it. We're about to form a death cross. Um, again, anywhere from 135 to below is still better level for us. Shiba Inu is within the strike zone coming, right? I said 2950, so we are basically hovering around there right now. Um, so anywhere from current level to the 900 is still better level for us. Mac tax now about close to 3% right now. Um, we still have some room to fall down to with the 42. So again, right, anywhere from, uh, as we break $2, obviously, I think we have a real shot of doing so. Um, first level is 194, 175 to 143 still level, I would ideally dollar cost average at. AVAX now about 4.57%. Um, it's coming true as we are going down, we broke 100. So you can see that that we are leaping down right now. As we break 90, which is the next level, you, you will hover around 87 first, but you can see how weak that is. And then we'll go to 80 to 60 from there. Luna. We're gonna keep selling off. This is uh, very logical because of, um, firstly, the head and shoulder. Secondly, because of the lack of resistance level. Right now we're testing 75, exactly what I said. Um, but this is really weak because of the fact that with the 45 out of 70. So again, right, at the 62, 52 to 45 from here. Respect to Enron, we are relatively oversold. How low oversold are we right now? 34. Three out of 70. So very oversold. I think we're in the strike zone pretty much uh, for Enron right now. So with respect to risk management level, these are levels that I identify so far. You can see that we're clearly in a lot of the um, attractive and steel level right now. So dollar cost average wisely. Um, again, do not throw all your bucket of money into the into the pool of investing because it allows yourself to have some cash reserve, right? Despite me having relatively sizable portfolio, I always keep a 30% of my cash reserve on the side, right? For a, a rainy day fund, emergency fund, um, because it's important that you have some room for you to wiggle. You cannot just like go completely belly flop with all your money and then next thing you know, you're holding the bag forever, right? Or for a long time. So be thoughtful, right? Um, and the methodology that I typically apply for fair level would be around like five to 10% of cash reserve as you go down to attractive, 
maybe um, 10 to 15 or 20 percent. And as you go to steel level, 30 percent of your cash reserve to go in. Right, but never go a hundred percent or even fifty percent because that's not risk management. That's just gambling, or uh, like throwing a hail mary if you may. Right, um, and also with respect to uh, sorry Enron, uh, we are basically within the steel level. So again, take logical risk. Do not go all in. All right, take it easy. Have a good uh, Thursday. Can't believe it's already almost Friday. But appreciate you and let me know how it goes. Take care. Bye.